Welcome to On The Clock right here on Forward Progress. I'm Rob Pizzola, and today I'm putting myself in the shoes of Tennessee Titans GM Ran Carthon. The rules are very simple here. I'm going to use Pro Football Focus's Mock Draft Simulator, keep all the default settings, and I'm drafting the top three rounds in this year's NFL Draft. This is what I'm doing, not necessarily what I think is going to happen. I'm making the pick based off of my beliefs of what the Titans should do, not what I think they are going to do. I'll look for some positional value here overall, and I'm going to explain my thought process on every single pick. You let me know down in the comments below how I did, whether you thought I should have done something differently, or if I had a good draft. And as always, if you're looking to wager on the NFL draft or the NFL or anything for that matter, make sure you check out Pinnacle Sportsbook, a very trusted reputation in the space. They've been in business for the past 25 years. Find out what pro bettors have known for decades. Pinnacle is where the best bettors play. You must be 19 plus. Not available in the U.S., and as always, please play responsibly. But let's get right into it here. We'll bring up Pro Football Focus's mock draft tool. The Titans picking at number seven overall. We're going to enter the draft room here, and we're going to start this speed uh, pretty slowly here so we can see how the top rounds break out and who's still available to us on the board. With the Tennessee Titans, they had a very interesting offseason. They brought in Calvin Ridley at wide receiver. They brought in Tony Pollard. Of course, they have a new head coach as well. They get Legereus Sneed from the Kansas City Chiefs. They brought in a lot of talent, but they're still going into the season with Will Levis at quarterback. Huge question mark. Hope they can develop him a little bit further. And arguably the worst offensive line in the entire league. Uh, they do have Lloyd Cushenberry at center, who's kind of improved every, every single year, but the tackle positions are a disaster for them. They need Skoronsky to step up and have a better sophomore year at left guard for them as well after being the 11th pick overall in the draft. So Titans O-line, a disaster. I'd love to write the ship there a little bit more, but ultimately, again, a team that can use playmakers at a lot of different positions. Wide receiver, DeAndre Hopkins is getting old. Calvin Ridley, who knows what you're going to get out of him. Traylon Burks, concussion issues. That might be a position to target as well. So we'll see who's available to us here. We'll start the draft. And we'll see where it goes. Caleb Williams off at number one. Jaden Daniels, number two. JJ McCarthy at three. We'll pause this now. Okay, so if we look at what's available here, it's very likely the Giants will take Drake May at six, considering he's fallen this far. What we don't want to happen is the top two wide receivers go off the board. Marvin Harrison Jr. would be prime selection here for the Chargers, especially with Joe Alt going at number four. Neighbors is there as well. I think we can kind of risk it at this point. There's just good enough players here that I don't think we need to, to give up additional capital to move up to five or six in this spot, especially with the likelihood that the Giants might take Drake May at six. So we're going to resume the draft and let it play out until we get to number seven here. So Udunze goes uh, and Harrison goes. Well, we still have a receiver available to us in Malik Neighbors, who recently had a substantial pro day at LSU. Looked pretty solid there. A vertical jump through the roof. And we have Drake May available to us here now. So this becomes a supremely valuable pick for the Titans to the point where I think that there's enough needs across the board, whether that be edge rusher, O-line, uh, safety, wide receiver, uh, potentially another quarterback who can challenge Will Levis, that we have to explore the trade market here. 14 teams willing to come up. The Bears are one of them. Now, the Bears took Caleb Williams at one, so they're not jumping up here to take Drake May. Let's see who's, who also uh, is offering trades in that list. Minnesota at 11 is next. Denver 12. So pretty much all these teams are, are in the mix. Let's go back up to Chicago at nine. I, what I don't like about Chicago here is we have to take a future pick from them um, in order for them to move up. It's not the end of the world. I mean, the Titans would have no problem with picking, having more picks in next year's draft. If we took look at a round two for next year, maybe Carolina's round two, they would take that. What does a round one next year look like instead of the round two? Not accepted. Okay, makes sense. Bears are playing hardball. We move on to the Vikings. We have three trade attempts remaining. We're going to go to the Minnesota Vikings at 11. What's the 11 and 23? And if we throw in the 106, does that change things? 8%. Let's try to let's try to go that route and we got it. So we give up seven and 106 and we pick up 11 and 23. So we're going to have two picks 
in the first round of this year's draft, which I love for the Titans. So we'll play this through on uh, we'll play this through as it stands right now, um, and we'll go for it. Okay, so we get to number eleven. There's still trade options. Twenty two with the Eagles. We have Brock Bowers on the board. We have Byron Murphy on the board as well, which is you know maybe a little bit of a stretch at eleven, but still pickable. Quinion Mitchell. There's options here. If we had to make the pick, we could make the pick. We're probably not getting the best positional value. Um, I'm going to play the role of GM like I'd want to and see if we could trade down a little bit further. Uh, 22 for 11. Let's look for the 50. Sounds good. All right, let's see if we can get this done. We're we're, we're taking a Titan 7 pick and we're going to end up moving all the way down to 22-23, but we're accruing so much draft capital capital this year. And we have now a lot of options available to us. So we forewent the top 10 pick. We'll sim through it now. And now we got back-to-back selections that are um, available to us at 22-23. We're going to take the, we're going to make the 22 pick and then decide if we want to go 23 as well. Uh, But I'm inclined. I see enough players here that I think are solid value. Cooper DeGene definitely is one of them. Cornerback out of Iowa. Uh, Nate Wiggins, another cornerback out of Clemson. Both of them are kind of being mocked in this type of range, early 20s. Um, Interior offensive lineman Jackson Powers Johnson out of Oregon. He fits the bill for this position as well. Even further down the list here, um, Brian Thomas out of LSU. He's a receiver that I could see going in this range in the actual draft. So there's lots of options available to us here in order to improve the Titans. It would kind of be sick to go double corner in this spot, especially after adding Legereus Need. Probably don't want to do that. Chidobi Uze is on the other side there. Not a stellar corner, but that's a pretty good one-two punch. It's not like the Titans need corner. But again, I'm all about drafting best players available type of situation. Let's click into Cooper DeGene here out of Iowa. And pretty solid coverage grades. Better zone scheme guy than a man guy. Big size for a cornerback and not a guy that they know which position he's going to play at corner in the pros because he's so versatile. So he could play on the outside, could play on the inside. Very good footwork. The knock on him is that he hasn't had very many uh, uh, snaps, excuse me, in press coverage over the past couple of years. That's a very small knock relative to all the positives. So I think we're going to use the first pick here on corner and take Cooper DeGene. Now we have our second pick. Let's see if there's these two trade offers that are available. The Colts at 46 is just a little bit too low. I don't want to just keep moving back and back and back and back and just acquiring a bunch of assets. So we're likely going to make this pick. There's no good edge rushers available here, which is a little bit unfortunate. Graham Barton is there at tackle and and the Titans could certainly use a tackle. It's just a little bit of a reach at that position. Graham Barton is considered a late first round prospect. Let's click into him really quickly and um, and just take a look at the analysis. Had some really good years at Duke. Good pass blocker. Better pass blocker than run blocker, which is good for this day and age in the NFL. He is a tough lineman, strong hands, moves well. His best position in the NFL is likely at center. That's interesting because Lloyd Cushenberry is there at center. I'm not so keen on the pick. I think it's a little bit of a reach. Let's go over to Jackson Powers Johnson out of Oregon, who I think I played center at Oregon, but could play guard in the NFL. And I mean, we're we're not going to replace Skaronsky at left guard this year. Daniel Brunthiel is the other guard. He's an undrafted free agent out of uh, San Diego State. I like adding some offensive line depth. Tyler Newbin's a little high. Brian Thomas Jr. here. Didn't have the best years at at LSU, generally speaking, uh, PFF grades wise. Not a lot of experience versus press. Cast, catch percentage lower than preferred the past three years. So good combination of size and speed. This is a tough one. This is a really t- tough one. We're not getting a good trade offer here. Nate Wiggins is the best player available at this point, but really wouldn't make a whole lot of sense to go corner, corner. I'm going to go with a slight reach here. And I, I am going to go with Brian Thomas Jr., I think there's enough question marks at receiver for Tennessee. I, listen, I know that they have DeAndre Hopkins. DeAndre Hopkins is on his last legs. Calvin Ridley is very inconsistent up and down. 
Traylon Burks, who knows what you're going to get out of him. I, I know that they spent a first round selection on him, but after a really good 2022, he was very injured in 2023. You, you can never have enough good receivers in the NFL. We're going to take Brian Thomas Jr. with the 23rd pick out of LSU. All right, we're in the second round at pick number 38 here, addressed cornerback and wide receiver in the first round. There's one trade option available to us. Let's just quickly take a look at what that is uh, to see if we dropping to 47 to take Seattle's 47 pick from the Giants. Um, I'm not sure I want to go that route. Probably just going to draft. Don't want to drop too many more spots here. So Taylor Newbin at the top of this lift, list, certainly the Titans can use a safety. I'm not convinced like this is the best spot. I've seen Newbin going roughly in the 40 to 45 range in a variety of mock drafts. I don't think there's a ton of value here. PFF loves him. They're ranking him 25th. We can come back to him overall. Zach Frazier, don't want another interior offensive lineman. Bo Nix is kind of an option, but we got to give Will Levis another season. So I'm not super keen on using that pick there. Jordan Morgan is very interesting. Tackle out of Arizona. Uh, I've seen him going early second round in a lot of mocks. Let's take a look at Jordan Morgan because this would fill a positional need. Got much better in 2022 and 2023 at Arizona. Needs to get stronger, whether he plays tackle or guard in the NFL, but he has desirable athletic traits, good hands and feet. So right now he can get pushed around a bit. So this is not a guy that they're going to be able to plug in probably immediately in the NFL, but it's someone that could be a pretty versatile offensive lineman for them and does have a chance to be a pro tackle. So I really do think this comes down to Tyler Newbin, the safety out of Minnesota, and Jordan Morgan at this position. Let's quickly take a look at Newbin. Three really good years in college. Great coverage grade for a safety. Doesn't miss much tackles. Good football IQ, good athleticism. Leads with the crown of the helmet too much as a con. I mean, that can be trained. A little bit of a lighter run defender. This is really a toss-up for me. I think both of these players could be picked in this range. I like the idea of drafting Newbin because he's more NFL ready. Although that offensive line is such an issue for the Titans. Like a disaster of an offensive line. I've changed my mind on the spot. Jordan Morgan, tackle, Arizona, being picked at number 38 here. Pick number 50 here for the Titans. Peyton Wilson, far and away, the best player according to PFF ranks. Typically speaking, I do see him go in the range of 40 to 50 in a lot of mock drafts. So certainly a player that has potential to be picked here. Let's look into him a little bit more. I'd like it if he had some pass rushing traits, Peyton Wilson. So his pass rush grade 76.8, better run defender. Let's check the analysis here really quickly extensive injury history. So that's one of the reasons why he probably has not been picked. Uh, he's a little bit older, age is high. So there's some downside associated with him. Chris Braswell out of Alabama would fit the mold here as well. So we'll look at him, good edge rusher, much better pass rusher than run defender playing on the edge. Solid pass rush win rate, 18.2%. Power, speed, and length. So right now, basically an impact starter is his ceiling, which is kind of what you'd expect at this point. So two players in Peyton Wilson, Chris Braswell, that could both be picked at this point. I like the idea of going immediate edge rusher here. I really do. Let's just scroll down a little bit more. Uh, Disa Isaac, this is too high for him at this point in terms of just value. He's probably someone who'll go in the 70s in the draft. Let's see those four trade options available to us as well. If we can go back slightly, which we can here to the Rams, let's try to do that. Let's try to grab the Rams 52. Let's look for a future pick. Let's try the round three and see if they they go for it. And they do. So I like that idea. We move back two spots. Hopefully both of our players don't get taken here as we resume the draft. And neither did. But now we do have to make the pick at 52. So that's great. Both our players still on the board. Accumulated a third rounder for next year. Can't go wrong with that. Uh, I'm going to say we go edge rusher here. Chris Braswell, Alabama, round out our second round here for the Tennessee Titans and close out our draft here on, on the clock. So we've reached, reached the conclusion of the draft. So we did trade down to the Vikings and acquire two first round picks in the process. We then traded the top one down to the Eagles for this year's second round pick and next year's second round pick. So we just accumulated a lot more picks. Cooper DeGene, A plus pick, cornerback out of Iowa. We addressed wide receiver even though it's not necessarily the biggest position of weakness right now, 
You do have some aging players and some uncertainty there. Jordan Morgan, uh, a prospect, uh, a project, I should say, at tackle, maybe ends up playing guard, but helps with the lack of depth at offensive line. And then Chris Braswell, our edge rusher. So all in all, four solid players. All that could be impact players in the next couple of years. We accumulated future draft capital. We didn't make that top pick at number seven, but I still think the Titans are far away from being able to compete, even with the offseason additions that they've made. So ultimately, I do like the idea of accumulating more picks a little bit further down the board, addressing some weaknesses on the roster. Let me know what you think. Would you have traded that seventh pick when it was available? Let me know down in the comments below. And overall, how you thought I did this draft. Ultimately, maybe not the best draft overall. Not weak by any stretch of the imagination, but don't get an impact offensive lineman right away, which is a little bit of a challenge. Overall, though, I'd certainly take it. If you did enjoy this video here on Ford Progress, make sure that you're subbed to our channel for more of these on the clock videos in the future. And make sure you smash that like button down below as I'll be back here for more NFL content leading up to the draft.